Well, hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Speak Big Sister Speak, the program brought to you by Pearls of Great Price Empowerment Services. What is this Speak Big Sister about? Well, this is the forum where we bring big sisters to come and have that girl session with us to speak to us from their hearts out of their experiences they're going to apply the salve of the word of god and after that session you know you'll be like ah you could really exhale so we have had two sessions thus far the first speaker she spoke on standing boldly and beautifully in her healing then our second speaker spoke about standing boldly and beautifully in her brokenness today's speaker is going to be speaking about faith i know for this past year and a half our faith has been tested and tried and I, I felt you know i know for me that sometimes i need that faith boost so today we're going to get just that from the big sister coming to speak to us today i just want to welcome those of you listening from the ladies in waiting face good Facebook group. Hi, ladies in waiting. And those of you viewing from the Pearls of Great Price Empowerment Services page, hello and welcome. Do me a favor, those of you on the Pearls of Great Price page, share this live. We, we really want those who need to hear this word to hear it. So go ahead, share. Go ahead, call a sister. For those of us in Trinidad and Tobago, happy Labor Day. For our sisters in the U.S., happy Juneteenth. We really want to welcome you again. And so, without further ado, let me bring our speaker today. I've had the pleasure of having her on once before. And she is such a lady, you know, quiet. And I'm the opposite, right? <laughs> but when you hear her speak, she is so profound. I really want to encourage you, listen today. You're going to get that faith boost that you need. Let's welcome, without further ado, Reverend Alveline Williams to speak, big sister, speak. Hello, hello, and welcome. Good night. Well, thank you so much for the welcome and invitation to be here. Um, I mean, the last time you were here, you came and you spoke to us about uh, being that preparation for marriage. Yes, and you think your wife material, and you took us through the paces of what 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 it means to really prepare for marriage, and and we so appreciated you. So I said I have to bring you back you know folks she said to me you know i'm not much of a big sister i said oh yes you are you certainly are to me and to those at pearls of great price so we are so glad that you said yesterday well, it's an honor thanks for the invitation it's really just an, it's my humble honor to just be here with all of you tonight all of you on facebook amen. and all the group amen so so for those of the, you know of yours new to you they didn't get you the last time so who is alveline williams if you were to describe yourself in, in a few lines what would you see well alveline is um a person who loves to be supportive i work in the background mm -hmm. i love using what the Lord has given to me to help and benefit others. I serve in ministry with my husband, Adyari Machich of the Nazarene, and they are responsible for administration. And then I also have a creative side that thanks to COVID and being on, on a lot of lockdown, I've been able to, you know, explore a lot of creativity wow, that, yeah. you know, I've had inside all this time, you know, so yes. that's in a nutshell. It's who I am ministry-wise and a little bit of the personal side. 
Amen. I, I love that last part, you know. It, it has been there shut up all this time. And thank yeah. God for COVID. It's now yeah. flowing out. I yeah, really yeah. like that. <laughs> yes. And, and we, we all have that now, yeah? A little more. A little, a little more. more. So mm -hmm. as I said, our topic today is standing boldly and beautifully in her faith. So Alveline, when you saw the topic, what was your first response to this topic? Other than Giselle is crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. oh my gosh yes. um, my big sister and <laughs> i think the other was when i recognized i was going to be sharing with the ladies in waiting i'm like usually i know ladies in waiting may not like to hear from <laughs> married ladies maybe we don't have anything to offer and mm. i know this is more than one and i thought about what about my faith makes it stand out but you know the lord showed me and i'm grateful and i'm thankful Amen. <laughs> well alvalid we are ready to hear what the lord showed you so take it away we are listening thank you again giselle for this opportunity to share in this forum thank you i really want to you know just appreciate giselle because i admire the way she's pursuing god's call on her life to minister to women through her pools of grace, of great price, sorry, I'm renaming your ministry, my apologies, pools of great price. And even through this single ladies ministry, I really admire that she is using this forum to continue to bless others. And I'm really happy and honored to be your guest tonight. And I am excited to share on this topic of standing boldly and beautifully in our faith. Um, because I know faith is very important. It's, you know, it, we need it. And we all have that desire and understanding to, you know, to, to grow and develop in our faith. But it's a journey. It has been a journey, you know, and many of us will attest to this, that, you know, you never ever fully get where you want to be you get to one point and then you realize there's a little more to go so you know i'm really happy for this opportunity tonight to, to be able to hopefully strengthen you in your faith journey and in what the lord is already doing in your life and even in the context of this ministry you know i contextualize it to the group ladies in waiting to the single woman because you know you are in a place of waiting on what you know you're hoping for the lord to do and many maybe many of our other viewers tonight who are logging in um via facebook through pills of great price or you just you know saw the link and maybe you are in a state of waiting yourself so i believe that tonight even this this encouragement you know would benefit you as well because we are all at one point or the other in some state of waiting whether it's waiting on a relationship or an answer to prayer whether you're married you may be waiting or you're single you're waiting because the reality is waiting is a part of life you know it's that space between what we want or what we desire and when we get it and in every sphere of life in every application of life there's some measure of waiting one thing I know is that waiting periods vary. Some waiting times are short and others are long. Some are fixed and you just know how long it's going to last. And other times, other periods, they are indefinite. But one thing tonight that really matters, no matter what type of waiting we're doing or what we're waiting for, the important thing is how you wait or what do you do during your waiting process? So tonight's suggestion, and, and as I connected to our topic, is that, that while you are waiting, whatever you're waiting for, that you need to stand boldly and beautifully in your faith. Because waiting is hard, it can be hard. And if anyone is in the room, it's like me, a little impatient, waiting is, difficult. I do not like waiting. If I show up to um, something and there's a long line, you know, namely, let's go say the bank, especially, I would postpone what I have to do because I am not into standing up and waiting very long. The line determines whether I will complete the task today. But, you know, waiting in a bank line or waiting to buy food or something else is 
definitely different from waiting on a matter of the heart. It just can't be compared. You know, it's not the same. It's, they are on different levels. But waiting is not something that we are used to in our lives. You know, we are, we, we are uh, get it done quickly kind of, you know, generation. We live in that time. Lots of things are instantaneous, but we can't escape it. Waiting is a part of life. So, but there are two aspects to waiting. Um, the first is that it can be very passive. Waiting can be passive, meaning that you are just simply waiting for a period of time to pass. It's like the time you spend waiting at the doctor's office, you are, you are in the waiting room. Many people live in a passive um, form of waiting. Well, you know, they say I'm waiting on this or I'm waiting on that, and it just means that time they're waiting. But the other aspect of waiting is more active. It's because it can not just more than waiting for time to pass, but it involves expectation. This active form of waiting is expressed in another word, the word hope. You know, it's to have hope because waiting with an expectation is to have hope that what is expected will come to pass that what is promised will come to pass and it is this active form of waiting that the lord you know has intended for us as believers in one sense yes we are to while we are waiting we are to you know take our hands off the situation leave it and allow it to allow god to do what he has to do but on the other hand there is a point where we are also supposed to be active or growing spiritually. So while while working, waiting, sorry, in any situation, we have to work on our faith. We have to work on our faith. We can't just, you know, wait passively. It's like uh, one person who writes, put it this way, you know, um, like when we are in we are working on our physical muscles in a gym. We are working out. The time of waiting is like the opportunity to develop our spiritual muscles, to develop our faith, to develop our hope, to develop our perseverance. And so we do this by making uh, deliberate efforts to incorporate scripture into our lives and to have the faith that God is working on our behalf. We, we eagerly take hold of the promises that he has given to us in the Bible and vigorously set our hearts and minds to believe on him when and be and and to obey him whenever he calls so as we make these active choices to trust god's promises our hope grows and we learn how to face our times of waiting our times of delay with much expectant endurance so a question to challenge your thoughts tonight is you know while i'm waiting how am i growing what am i doing with my waiting period while i'm waiting for my answers i'm waiting for my meet i'm waiting for you know a, a response am i am i growing am i investing in my growth Am I, am I spending time investing in my my spiritual life? You know, in the in this time of pandemic and lockdown, we can spend a lot of time binge watching um, <laughs> on Netflix. I must admit, at first last year, at the beginning of the pandemic, I took the opportunity to watch all the seasons of The Office because I I love laughing, you know, and I really just watched. It took a long time. It took many nights of staying up to many hours watching episode after episode but you know when i look back but of course i didn't spend the rest of the pandemic because i guess in the beginning we all thought it would be for a short period of time <laughs> but noticing now that this extra time we've been given to we need to invest it properly we need to turn it into something that makes something makes a difference for us and i mean and we see this when we look around everywhere we see a lot of people change turning their time into businesses turning their time into ideas into new things new ventures and that is wonderful we must also do the same thing for our feet for our spiritual lives that we must be able to take the time that we have, the downtime or the times of waiting, the waiting periods, and turn it into something meaningfully for us spiritually. In the book of Luke, Jesus shares a parable to um, his listeners about what to do in a time of waiting. He used the parable of 
um, the landowner and his servants to explain how, what, you know, that the, the whole um, situation where they were waiting for the Messiah to come and maybe some didn't know if to keep on waiting. Some didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah that came. But, you know, he decided to teach them using this parable and he tells them about the landowner who left and to go to a distant city and he says you know he's going to get his kingdom and he's going to come back and what he tells his servants he tells his 10 servants you know occupy until i come until i come back so while they are waiting on me occupy and what does the word occupy the word occupy means well it forms part of the word that we know occupation which you know is work to be busy and some other visions say you know to do business you know so he's saying to them be occupied Waiting is not only just, to, don't just wait on me to come back. Just don't wait for your answers to show up. Just don't wait. Be occupied. Do something while you are waiting. So waiting is not just passive, but we have to be occupied or do something while we are waiting. And when it comes to our faith, we need to be occupied. We need to be busy about our spiritual lives. Be busy about our calling, our passions. Don't just wait on God to show up, you know, and we wait. Sometimes we're waiting for the moment, we're waiting for the boom or something like that. We need to, we need to occupy, we need to do something about our, our relationship. We need to prioritize our relationship with God. And I know that in this forum, there are many who, you know, we're, we're seeking human relationships or, or, or human needs, but our relationship with God is the ultimate relationship. And it is out of this relationship with God, all the blessings for our earthly relationships will flow. So we need to give, you know, priority to our wait, to, to, to our relationships and what we do in this period of waiting. We need to, to work on our faith and be, you know, determined about it. So what does waiting or what does, sorry, being beautiful or standing beautifully and boldly in our feet look like and what do I recommend tonight for anyone who's listening is that one and on some of these these tidbits I mean there are lots of things that could be shared and I trust that you know tonight these will the Holy Spirit will use these to minister to you and a lot of them come from the book of Hebrews that are, are you know kind of gone through but the first, the first encouragement that I would give to us as we, 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 we stand in our feet and as we need to build our feet is that we need to run this race. We need to run the race that we're in with perseverance and with determination. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 tells us, let's run this race with perseverance, the race marked out for us. And what I like about it is that it says the race marked out for us, meaning that your race, my race, it's all specifically designed for each one of us. Our relationship with God, it is marked out for us. How our journey is marked out for us. We need to keep our eyes in our lane, you know, on our race, on our relationship, and be determined to run that race to the end. God has our race, everyone's race marked out for them. And the problem that we have a lot is that we have a comparison problem. I mean, it's not a new problem. It's an age-old problem. And the world of social media does not help us one bit. But this problem is not unique to any of us. All of us fall into that, that trap of you know, comparing ourselves to others. And while it's important to learn from others' examples, we must know that we have a race marked out for us, a race marked out by God. We may spend a lot of time and energy focusing on the journey or the race of others, and our own race will suffer. Or sometimes we wind up discouraged or disappointed, you know, and there is a fact out there that, you know, when we compare ourselves to others, there will be others comparing themselves to us. And I mean, and that equation just really doesn't add up because here we are all looking at each other and 
you know, and, and building our standards based on each other. And the ultimate standard is God and what he's doing in us. And he has a personal standard for each one of us, something that we can all follow. And so we need to run our own race, you know. I, I could imagine that there may be single persons who feel very miserable being single. You know, you, you think of, you know, you feel lonely. But I, I am also sure that there are married people out there who are also very miserable and they are looking on at someone in their singleness and wishing that they could have their state of happiness. <laughs> and, you know, so if, you know, the change of state, if whether being single or married does not guarantee happiness, then it must be something else. Something else is responsible for our happiness or for our satisfaction. And I think satisfaction comes when we run the race that we were called to. And we do that with that with that, that mindset of perseverance and determination, the race that was marked out for each one of us. So my, my first encouragement to us is that, you know, to stand in your feet, begin to run your race in Christ, begin to run the race that he has called you to, you know, not looking left or right, but running your race. And then how do we do this? The scripture again, right in verse two of Hebrews tells us, we, he says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Fix our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. He is the writer and the perfecter of our faith. Our faith is our, our belief system, our conviction of what we believe, of our trust and of our confidence. And everything rests on Jesus. And our lives must be focused on following his example as the son of God and doing exactly as he wants us to do. You know, that is the example Christ set for us. He was focused on what the Father had called him to do in spite of the temptations for him to go astray, in spite of the familiar voices asking him to not go through with what he, he had done. Maybe his own, even his inner thoughts, thinking of his, his, his deity and how he must now suffer. He rejected even that to pursue what God had called him to do. And he's the one who's writing our faith. He's the one who even, you know, not only writes it, but perfects it. And so this is why it says we must fix our eyes on Jesus Christ by following him, following what he calls us to do, following what he has established for us to do, you know, fix our eyes on Jesus Christ so that we, we will not waver, we will not be misguided, and we will not even be deceived. The third area of faith that I want to encourage you that faith is confidence. You know, if we want to stand boldly, we know that faith is confident. Faith not just gives us confidence, but it is confident. That's what the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse one. Faith is a confidence, is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what you, we do not see. So we have to be hopeful, be confident in our faith. You know, sometimes we, many times, not sometimes, many times we cannot see with our eyes what we are waiting on or what we are waiting for. But we using that word confidence where it says faith is confidence. Confidence is that feeling or that belief that you can rely on someone or you can rely on that person or something. And it's a it's it's a feeling that gives you a certain you know kind of then it then it gives you the other you know the, the outward confidence to be able because you know maybe not all the time even people who you know talk of their own personal confidence you may not always have that feeling of the ability to do something but confidence is what fuels you to do that thing even if you do not have the ability you know and lack of confidence again, would help have someone who has all the ability to not be able to do what they are able to do. But what the scripture is saying, we have this con faith is confidence. It's like, I see it as an equation. It's equal to confidence because faith gives us the confidence, and confidence that we can trust and rely on. So that even if we don't see it, even if we don't have it all together, 
we have this confidence by believing in God that we would be able to live and to walk and to experience and to have and to everything that we are hoping and waiting for. So today, I want you to, or you know, as we think about faith and we 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 we, th we talk about it, we see faith as confidence. It's not, you know, confidence in believing for what we what we have or what we are hoping for so you know we run the race we fix our eyes on christ but we have that we place our confidence in him a reality is that oftentimes while you know when it comes to fees or when it comes to waiting that we can get weary we may want to give up we feel like giving up but when it comes to faith and our faith in God, we have to approach this with a never give up mindset, you know? And, and that's what the scripture says for us to have perseverance and determination because this having faith in this way allows us to stand, to be, remain committed to our convictions, even when others may walk away. Hebrews chapter 10 again tells us in verse 35 to 36 that admonishes us that we should not throw away our confidence, which has a great, great reward. For you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. Another Bible says like this, don't let your happy trust in the Lord die away no matter what happens. Remember your reward. You need to keep on patiently doing God's will if you want him to do for you all that he has promised. And that's the idea, my sisters. You have to never give up. When it comes to faith, you have to have that mindset. You never give up. Because what the scripture tells us, when you, if you give up, you will not receive what has been promised or what you have been hoping for and you know i always you know think of the, an analogy that you know i've heard in many different stories and many times of someone who is you know you know pursuing a course running a race and they give up only to realize that when they have given up was just before they would have accomplished their task or their victory. And so it has helped me many times when I would have thought of, you know, giving up. You say, you know what, Alvin, you can't give up because you never know what you are hoping or waiting for could be right around the corner. And I don't want to miss out on, you know, having waited all this time, having prayed, having invested to give up before this time has come, you know, before I get my reward. I want to get my reward. So perseverance is the key for us to receiving the very best that God has planned for us. We must endure walking in his will. We must say that no matter what happens or no matter how long it takes, I know for certain I have the confidence that I will receive the blessings that God has planned for me. I believe that giving up, you know, of all the things that we could do, you know, we could stumble, we could fall, we could make really bad mistakes. But I think that the worst thing that we can ever do is to give up. And giving up even in the midst of the difficulty is like a thief. It's, it's, it's a rubber. That decision to quit in the midst of difficulties I often see and have seen and witnessed and feel that it robs you the opportunity to grow. Even if it's just part of the journey, even if it's not the final say, it can rob you. Giving up in a difficult season can rob you of your opportunity to grow or to become stronger. And so whenever you feel like giving up and that temptation comes, tell yourself that something is up because usually the only person who wants us to give up in a the point when we may receive our breakthrough is, you know, the enemy of our souls. And I tell myself, when it's difficult, I will push and push even harder because it's only when you give up, it's over. But you have to have that fighting mindset that you have to say, I'm going to fight it out. I'm going to fight the urge to give up. I'm going to fight the urge to give in or throw in the towel. And oftentimes when we do this, we will find on the other side of that temptation, on the other side of that feeling, 
we would find stronger faith. We would find we would find breakthrough. We would find that strength to be able to continue to go on. But if we give up, we never see the other side of what our situation will bring us. So when it comes to our faith, my sisters, I will say, carry that never give up mindset, that never give up, that determined mindset that you will continue no matter what, no matter how long, no matter how hard. And that really has made the difference for me. And I know that it would help in your faith. Now, the final encouragement that, you know, I want to leave with you tonight is regarding your faith is something that came to me very recently, you know, an experience I had this morning. And it is to look out for the pest. Look out for the pest. And I will explain. Because you see, when you make a decision for faith or a decision to grow or a decision to 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 to, to stand firm in your faith and to stand bold and courageous, pests will come to attack your feet. When you begin to produce fruit, you know, pests will come. Look out for the pests in your lives. For the last couple of weeks, I have been nurturing some tomato plants. I started to do this when the price of tomato went from $12 to $18 in one week. So every day I would go out and, you know, weed my plants, add some fertilizer. You know, I was very happy when I saw that they started to flower. I said, wow, look at how many flowers. That means lots of tomatoes, lots of savings. You know, I, um, I, I did get a little, maybe the, the, the sight of the flowers um, did get me a little excited. And it is a tendency of mine, you know, when I start to get results, I get a little complacent. So I say, all right, so these, these trees are doing so lovely. Look at how many flowers it's doing well. Pretty soon I'll have tomatoes. So instead of going outside, I started to look at them through the window because, you know, the rain was falling and I didn't need to go outside and attend to them. So I looked out from the window and I'm seeing all the tomatoes coming up and I'm like, yes, the tomatoes are looking good. They're green. Pretty soon they will be right so i went out there to to, to to do some you know more care and to realize lo and behold half of the tomatoes that were looking so beautifully from the window were being eaten away by some pesky bug i don't know where those bugs were all the time because they were not evident you know everything was looking so green and beautiful but now as soon as my tomatoes have started to grow these little fellas rolling to have a feast and it was it was disappointing because the, the tomatoes are there on the tree they are looking beautiful and they are half eaten away you know what i'm saying the bug will not even eat the whole tomato he eats half and he moves on to the next but you know it made me think about what really happens in our life and even in our faith journeys that there are many times and i have seen experienced this and witnessed this a lot that you will reach a place of stability. You will start taking your life seriously, taking your ministry seriously, taking faith seriously. You, you make a commitment to change and to do something different and then bam, things start to happen. And one of the things that I have really observed is that, you see, when the obvious things start to happen that threaten our faith, I think those are not as bad as the things that are not as obvious. You know, there are times when people can say, you know what, I know this is an attack from the enemy. I think those are not as bad as the ones that we cannot even identify, like my little bug on the tomato tree. Could not see him. But by the time I did discover, it was, you know, already almost too late. And it's these covert little critters that can come into our lives like busyness or opportunities, a relationship, financial stress, maybe relationship stress or any kind of stress, medical issue or maybe a wrong internal attitude, things that are not so easy to detect. They come into our lives and sooner rather than later, it begins to erode the strong footing that we were trying to establish. It's just like what the scripture says in Mark chapter 14 about the seed that was sown on thorny ground. You know, the word is there. The word is, is being planted and it, it, there's intention for it to grow. But what, what are the thorns? The worries of life, it says. The deceitfulness of wealth. 
the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. And to maintain our faith and our spiritual standing, we have to constantly pay attention to the pests that want to destroy our faith and destroy our relationship with God. You have to do this by knowing what to look out for. There are many times we get caught off guard. You know, we need to beef up our detection skills to know what is threatening us and what is what is going to attack us. Um, the first time, back to my gardening illustration, the first time we planted pak choy, you know, there were some caterpillars, they ate up everything, you know, it was a disaster. So, you know, you uprooted everything and you said, okay, no, no more pak choy. So we tried broccoli and cauliflower and, you know, then everything was looking good for a while and everything started to turn black and shrivel up, no broccoli, no cauliflower. But, you know, the next time that I decided I would try pak choy again, I went to the agricultural website and I downloaded a pamphlet on growing pak choy. And they had on the list, they had on the sheet, they had all the different bugs you can expect, the different pests, the different threats, how to identify them, how to, to recognize them, how to treat with them, how to prevent them. And I took my sheet, I printed it out, and I went back to, pack, to plant in Pak Choi. And I mean, the second time around, I definitely did get a better result. But I think that... I was more informed. I was more prepared. And I think the same thing goes with our lives, with our, with our spiritual lives. We have to be aware of what's threatening us. What, is, what are the potential threats to our relationship with God? What are the threats to our life? Pay attention to what, you know, how we are growing because there will be things established to threaten our success to threaten our faith, to threaten our mental well-being. And if we are unaware of them, we will be caught off guard or blindsided and, you know, usually struck down or knocked down, whether temporarily or permanently, because of these things. I need to be aware of what's going to take me out so that I can be prepared. We need to be able to take some. So pay attention while we run this race, while we persevere and we have determination. It's not over until we are, we are confident and we are knowledgeable about what potentially exists to threaten us and to destabilize us. So I encourage you that if you are standing firm in your faith, don't just be full of faith. But look out for the pests. Be aware of what can threaten you. You know, and as I close, you know, I considered my own faith experience, which I do not really consider to be spectacular. I've always joked about it. Um, even, you know, when in college, in Bible college, we always joked about it with another friend that, you know, my my faith, my coming to Christ experience is not as you know, as, as, as dramatic as others, but a very simple story, you know, the one where you grew up in a Christian home, accepted Christ very early on. You had your struggles during teenage years, but you know, after having a very low experience in my later teenage years, I found, and I heard the voice of God, I know he was calling me and he was calling me to be in ministry. And it came at the end of my um, secondary schooling. And I decided to follow God, follow his leading and pursue ministry. It was not an easy decision for me um, because, you know, there are so many expectations and, you know, you, you know, you think of what others may think. And, but, you know, I had that conviction in my heart that I wanted to follow Christ fully. And even in following fully, you know, I still went in, but with some reservation. And, you know, during the course of my, my preparation, you know, I, I, I further submitted to what God was calling me to do. And that's what I, my faith journey has been just every day trying to follow his voice to serve him and to to serve others and to do what happens and to have that confidence that to live in that confidence to live in that faith that my confidence is in him that i can be sure assured of whatever he is saying to me or asking me to do that i can do it and at the end of the day i think my 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 faith i would if i had to use 
one way to describe my faith journey or faith experience, it would be commitment. I am just committed to my faith in God. And I want to just close by encouraging you tonight to remain committed to your faith in God. You know, maybe you've been waiting for answers, you're waiting for resolutions and solutions. And, you know, in this day and age, we all look for evidence for things. And, you know, there's lots of fake evidence and there's other things and sometimes there's no evidence. And faith is having that confidence in spite of the fact of not seeing the evidence of everything that we are believing for. But I can assure you tonight that our God is real. He is faithful. And you can have that confidence that a life lived in him is secure. It is stable. You can be unwavering and unmoving. Our faith life is the core and it's the substance of everything that we need in this life. So I encourage you to run this race with a perseverance and a determination to win and to finish strong. God bless you. Wow. 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 I'm busy writing yeah. notes. <laughs> and I'm here and you're finishing. Okay. <laughs> Whoo. This has been so refreshing. So refreshing. <laughs> Ladies in waiting, those of you on live, if you have any questions for Alvedine, we'll probably take just one or two. First come, first serve, pop them in the comments now, 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 so that we can get to them before we have to end the program. Or if you have a comment for her and, and how her, her sharing this evening blessed you, you go ahead and you put that in the comments. So I'll start <laughs> while we wait for any question. Alvedine, so much but i just focus on one or two things that popped out at me uh, and you're like me we put things in equations and, and you were describing waiting you were linking waiting hope and faith and then you use this description for faith it's expected endurance yes nice. i loved that could you just give me a few more seconds of what what does it mean to really have ex Expected endurance. I really like how you pair it together. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is the it, it 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 goes together. You know, you you're waiting, but you have that expectation that you are going to receive yes. what you've been asking for. But endurance is a, is a key part of it. You can't you know you can't just wait aimlessly or just mm -hmm. you know waiting in a void or a vacuum but you have that expectation in your heart but you're holding on to it and you're not giving up you're not yes. giving up because yes. you know in waiting waiting we could either just be like casual mm -hmm. and when it happens it happens you might not even think about it now i'm not yes. saying to agonize over something and to you know to hold on to it but you, in your heart you have this expectation that one you are waiting two yes. and you will not give up you will not give up yeah. wow yeah and it, and it's it, it almost seems as if you're you're telling us you know you have to be strategic about this thing yes. understand what this is about yes. it's not an airy fairy thing you're in expectation but you need to understand that endurance is all part and parcel yes. of it yeah yes yeah, so, Sorry, I think sometimes people get disappointed by the weight because they're not prepared yes. for the yes. weight. So you think, oh, look how long, and then you give up. But if you have in mind that no matter how long this takes, because I have this confidence, I'm not going to give up. I'm mm -hmm. going to hold on. I'm going to wait. Mm -hmm. That can carry you, uh, give you a little more mileage yes. than Ooh. rather than, you know. I like <laughs> that too. <laughs> if you're still taking notes, take that on. It gives you a bit more mileage because it's anchored in something. Yeah? Wow. Yeah. And then you went to something. The first, I think, a threat to our face faith is comparison of another person's race yes. and i was like i was looking over my life and i'm like yeah that one so even as single ladies as we wait we we should have blinders on you don't compare your faith walk and your waiting season to another or else you set yourself up for again firstly disappointment and then the wavering effect that it will have on your faith you, you you went into it run the race mapped out for you yes. walk this waiting single season because it has been mapped out 
for you, for you yes, not yes. for the sister. We don't have identical uh, 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 races. Your no. race is your yes. race. Yes. Yeah? Yes, and you find so much. I think, you know, it's a key to happiness as well to find mm. satisfaction mm. in knowing that this is my race and I'm doing it to the best to my ability, you know, yes. comparison is a deadly trap. I mean, we, all of our men, I think yes. we struggle with it. When we, but you know, it. I think it's a key to mm -hmm. satisfaction in your own race that, mm -hmm. you know, you understand what, you're, what you have been calling to. I mean, it doesn't mean that you have to like what has been handed to you either, Giselle, because mm -hmm. I'm not trying to dismiss anybody's emotions and Correct. how they feel yeah. about, you know, so it doesn't mean you have to like it, but you see, this is mine and you mm -hmm. take ownership and then you go to your father and he will help you to understand this reason because if you understand that he's the one who's mapped this out for you definitely yes. he knows where it's going so you better yes. ask him you know to help you understand what's next and how exactly. to you know, to change. wow and mm -hmm. then the last thing that just threw it out of the water for me when you went into that description about looking for the pests mm -hmm. that can attack and undermine your faith and and it was so so this point you said from your window looking at the the plants from your window everything looked okay nice. they're growing nicely but it's when you went outside and you went closer upon closer inspection then you realized what was happening and so from that you know a few things jumped out at me that faith is not an external thing it's really an internal dimension an internal positioning that you have to grab hold of so we can't you know window dress faith as individuals we really have to turn the mirror this way and look inward to make sure that the, the pests that and we we know the pests we have to identify our own pests that would come and to attack and, and erode our faith we have to do that kind of internal inspection i was like oh my goodness i love that illustration it also says that it, it needs continual assessment because then you went on to the, the the agriculture website or whatever to search for more okay how do i deal with this and then you came back and as you you did what you saw you you continually assess the plant and then you realize okay it's coming back to life and it's the same as our faith Yes. it's not for for for, for a, a sprint it's a, it's a yes. long haul and we have to keep checking am yes. i okay you know like those are uh, truck drivers in the states and they have designated pit stops so right. that they could check everything mm -hmm. I, i'm thinking like that for our faith we have to yes. do that pit stop yes. and kind of wow yeah and you have to do checks can and you, you have to have that mindset that even if i mean what we call a failure or mm -hmm. a setback you can't mm -hmm. stop have to mm -hmm. retool, re strategize, yes. pick up. Yes. And again, this race is not about quitting or stopping. You know, yes. we do that when we do that. We have to just retool, reconfigure, right. get right. up again and try again and mm -hmm. try again until we get it. Until it's we get experience it. It's a learning experience. It's a growth, it's a it's a step in growth. That's a step right. in training. And and this feet and if I could another way to describe feet is a journey. It's, it's just a journey. Wow, I, I, you, you should still be taking notes, ladies in waiting. Faith, another descriptor, it's a journey. <laughs> It's a journey. It's a journey. And, and you know, as we go through our seasons, and like, after a while, we, we kind of start to enjoy the faith journey. Yeah. In the initial periods, it's like, oh, Lord. But I think, I know for me, you know, we still have the ups and downs, of course. But I think we... we and it's because we're, we're, we're understanding more and we have a greater appreciation for what this is. Yeah. Okay, it's a journey. I have to pace myself. Okay. And it's okay, as you, you said, it's okay yeah. to make a mistake. It's yeah. okay to feel that you're so low down. Pick yourself up and Pick let's up. go again. Yeah. Let's wow, go. wow, wow. And then your final testimony, I, I just said that it blew it out. I think this blew it out of the water because we have similar testimonies, you know, and how you finally said, for you, faith is following his voice. And that's how you would describe your faith work, learning 
to follow the voice of God. And that verse, my sheep knows my voice. It's not just a verse for you because you, you have experience with hearing the father speak and understanding, okay, this is what he wants me to do. Yeah. Wow, Alvaline. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, not, it's never easy. And even I, as you said, I'm hearing his voice. Mm -hmm. I, I often remember in my younger years praying that this out of, you know, when, when you have times of confusion, like, I don't know, Lord, what you're saying. And, you know, your word says, my sheep know your voice, but I'm not sure if I'm hearing you. And what I realized with experience, as you said, by keep, as you get open, you know, as you go along in a journey, what you really mm -hmm. get is experience. And experience sometimes means that, yes, there were times when maybe you, you heard the voice and you did something that you were not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Then you do that and you're able to identify, oh, that's his voice. So the oh, next time, yeah. <laughs> exactly. next time, you know, okay, when you hear that voice, you better listen to what this yes. voice is. You know, and, and it's, so again, it just, it just goes, you know, what you identify just goes back to the whole thing. It's a journey, it's an experience, and it's only in, you know, walking, walking in your own journey, in your race mm -hmm. with the Lord that you will get. Because some you can't ask somebody, tell me what God's voice sounds like. They can't mm -hmm. tell you, only you will know. You will know. Just some, just some. Okay, wait, wait. I'm going to say that again. I cannot ask no. Sister Somebody. Deborah. No. Tell me what God's what voice sounds like. Yeah. No, no, she no. can't tell me that. I have to I find to that find out. Because yes. even yes. though she describes it, it's for her, yes. not for me. Yes, yes. And that's important to have our, our, our race, to run our race. And, you know, so we can't, you know, do, wow. do it like anybody else in that sense. You know, I'm not talking about the kind of crazy thing, but I'm talking about we can't take other people's experience. And even I think you were saying just a little while ago, it made me think of what this, even this whole COVID experience has done by mm -hmm. taking us out of the church setting. It mm -hmm. allows us to look inside, to really find God for ourselves because yes. without that place to go to, every Sunday where everybody knows, okay, I'm going to church, but now I have to go to church yes. somewhere, not just on Sunday morning on Zoom, but I have to go to church because I have to find that connection with God. I have to for find myself. it, yeah, for yeah. myself. Yes. Wow. Aveline, I, I, I really feel so refreshed and, 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 and you, you're taking me back in, in my memory and, and, and this song is coming up to me and you might be familiar with this song. I don't know if the viewers are, but I'll just sing this part of it that, that's playing in my head now about faith. Living by faith in Jesus above. I'm trusting, confiding in his great love. I'm safe from all harm in his sheltering arms. I'm living by faith and I feel no alarm. You know, we, we don't sing much of these hymns again. But when I sing that song, every time I'm going through a testing time with my faith, it always comes back to me. Living by faith in Jesus above. Trusting, confiding in his great love. Safe from all harm in his sheltering arm. I'm living by faith and I feel no alarm. I remember the start of the pandemic. I started to feel alarm like, oh my goodness. And the song came back again. Hey, I got you. So we want to end on that note that you should feel no alarm in your season of waiting. And if you're on here, you're married, as Alvin said, you could be whoever. Everyone goes through a, 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 a period where they have to reckon with their faith walk. And if you're in that position today, don't feel any alarm. Yes. Hold on to the word of God do your internal assessment look for those pests that come to erode your faith and know that as you follow his voice your confidence is built in him to continue your walk of faith Alvaline, i'll ask you just to pray for the ladies on the live as we end our session today in jesus name amen
Amen. Father in heaven, I pray for everyone who is watching this live and those who will watch the replay, Lord. Father, you see and you know each one of us where we are at, Lord, in our relationship to you, in our faith journey. And I pray today that there would be a strengthening, a renewal, a rebirth, and something great, O oh God, would be unlocked, O oh Lord, in our walk with you, O oh Lord, so that as we get closer to you, Lord, we will be able to live and experience all of the blessings and the joy of living a life in you, O Lord. I yes. pray for anyone who is struggling in their waiting period, Lord Father, that you would help them to endure. You would help them to hold on and to persevere. Give wisdom, God. Give the right strategies and yes. right direction to be able to do what we must do. And then, Lord, I know you will do what only you can do, that you will connect us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. And so, Father, even those who are maybe under attack. I pray for even in those areas where the attack is covert and it's unobvious to the eye. I pray that there'll be an opening of eyesight, Lord, yes, and a Lord. removal of all scales, Lord, so that we will be able to see and know what is attacking us and preventing us from growing, oh God. So I yes. thank you, Lord, for the new season and for the next step of our journeys, oh Lord, with you, oh Lord. Thank you for all that you're doing, even through this ministry and through Giselle. May you continue to just replenish her and strengthen thank her and pours out and she gives, Lord, and that, Lord, you will continue to use this ministry to bless the lives of many, many women so that we become closer to you and be all that you have called us to be. Yes, in Jesus Lord. Name. Amen. Amen. Well, this has been another episode of Speak, Big Sister Speak. We have some people saying that they were really blessed. Let me just say thank you. Thank you, uh, Magdalene. Thank That's you for. <laughs> oh, hi, mommy. <laughs> thank you for coming on. Uh, Claudette, I was really blessed with the word from my sister. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Uh, Eagle Patrice, very encouraging. Yes, yes, yes. And she comes back again. Amen. <laughs> so, ladies in waiting and those viewing from our Pearls of Great Price and Courage uh, Empowerment Services page, we continue our Speak Big Sister Speak uh, series on the next holiday that we'll be celebrating. So, look out for the announcement where we'll have another big sister coming in to share with us. I know that you enjoy enjoyed today's session well until next time thank you alveline and thank you ladies for coming bye, bye.